The way she's just standing there, Mariku, you are such a boss, look at her. Man, when you're sitting there about to do something dramatic and they had a soundtrack for you, that's, that's next level. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to Shogun. We are now into episode nine already, and it is called Crimson Sky. So this title has me a little bit hyped because this Crimson Sky was dropped on us two episodes ago as a possible battle plan. It is kind of the Hail Mary, we're going all in, this is it type of defense, or offense actually in this case, that Toranaga and the late Hiramatsu had come up with as a possible way to win this war. And apparently it's something it wasn't just for this, it was something that was, well, actually no, it would have been for this because again, Toranaga being the forward thinker that he is, he knew that something was gonna go down with him in the regions at some point. But anyways, going back to the last episode, we had just a lot of heartbreaking stuff to be honest. We dealt with the the death, uh, the deaths of Toranaga and Hiramatsu, not Toranaga, sorry, Toranaga's son and Hiramatsu. We got Toranaga going back to Edo because he got a mourning period afforded to him because of the death of his son. And during that time, he played the role of somebody who was deep in grief and broken emotionally, mentally, and basically wanted it communicated that he was giving up, that he didn't care about the war anymore. He lost, he was gonna surrender, like it's all over now. And we see that amongst his ranks, not everybody believed this because Toranaga is someone who's had a reputation for many, many years of always having another plan, a trick up his sleeve, something. And so because of that, Toranaga, in order for his plan to work, he needed everyone including those in his ranks to believe that he genuinely had been broken, like this was the end of it for him. And he couldn't think of any other way to do that un unless something very drastic happened. And that drastic thing ended up being the death of Hiramatsu, his, his best friend, his brother, who I'd say almost a father figure, like he has been with Toranaga from the get go. And that was definitely probably the hardest loss for Toranaga thus far. But his death worked, it did exactly what Toranaga wanted it to do in that the, his men now, throughout the ranks of his people and, and Edo and of course beyond, because there's several people going back now to, to uh, Osaka, they all believe that he literally is at his breaking point and that it's over. So this is basically where we left things with uh, that message going out, Toranaga letting Mariko know that the real phase of the plan is about to kick off. He said that now it's her turn to get in there and do her part. And she said she's ready to go. My girl Mariko has been dealing with a lot. So she's now joining John and uh, um, Yabashige who are now supposed to be delivering the guns and the ship to Asaka to give in surrender. So she's joined them, but of course they don't know why she's there and I have a feeling she's not gonna be divulging any of that. So yeah, we've got Toranaga who's eventually gonna be joining his traitorous half brother on the march to Osaka. And then he's got his three other people who are coming in from the boats, possibly more too, if I know Toranaga. So yeah, we're heading to Osaka and the game's about to be on. I'm looking forward to see whether or not we see Mariko and Ochiba interact because we know now from the last episode that they have a history. So I'm very interested to see if they do interface again and what might come of that because they're both on opposite sides of this at the moment but they have that old friendship. So, ooh, lots of juicy stuff that we might be getting into with only two episodes left. So I think I'm ready to get in. Let's do this. Just before I do though, a reminder that if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads of this show or anything else that you might be watching of mine, please go ahead and join that fam, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell, and please show some love if you're feeling it. All right, that out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. Oh, wow, is this hell? We've gone to hell. Mariko? Because we've seen a few flashbacks of her in the snow. Ma'am, it's free. Okay. Yeah, this is Mariko. This is her flashback. Oh, she's pregnant. 14 years ago. Wow, she was doing all this while pregnant. Damn. She really didn't care. <laughs> I wish sadness had an age. We have. Okay. I will say this. Suji, I can understand why he's, why he's important to her and why she has this 
it explains why her faith is so important to her. Like if this is what came and convinced her to live, especially in such a delicate condition all those years ago, then I understand why she feels so fiercely to protect it. I like that line. Sometimes there's just nothing you can say. You just need something tangible. Okay. I like that. Now we get the history. We understand. So those are probably the dark thoughts that he was talking about a few episodes ago about whether or not she still had those dark thoughts. He was referring to her still wanting to do something reckless. I'm glad that she seems to have found her, her footing and her purpose. Why did he send you here? Is that any of your business? Nothing to do with you. Period. <laughs> Yeah, very close. Why would I not? <laughs> what, what reason would she have to lie about that? I know Yabushige thinks he's clever, but he really isn't. <laughs> Damn, what Osaka do to you, man? Osaka just be existing and it just gets crapped on. The amount of strays it's taken from... Yabashige from Toranaga from Hiramatsu, like damn. Right, poor John's like, the last time I was here, things were not great. And I thought we were leaving forever. <laughs> when I deliver to you the Catholic gold, you won't regret it. Yeah, you said no translator. No, he doesn't. <laughs> so he doesn't trust Mariko. Interesting. What kind of word would you be looking for? Yeah, I'll read this later. Oh, so they know. Okay. I think that's Toronaga's sister though, right? So she would know. Toronaga is planning something. You'll have to find out what it is. You won't. You'll never find out. But it's interesting that everybody knows that Toronaga is too smart. War is coming. That part is true. Okay, Mr. Frilly Collar's not completely dumb. He knows. Little too, I think he's like Ochiba. He realizes that it ain't over until Toronaga's dead. Listen, I mean, I'm 50-50 I'm about this because I don't like the fact that he suddenly doesn't trust Mariko, which is not bad in Yabashige's case, but I do like that he's kind of pushing John to have to catch up quick because he's going to be in positions more and more where he's not going to have a translator. Who's prisoner? Mm. Look at you, John, the toy everybody's fighting over. What? What do you want? Oh. I am Kiyama Ukon Sadanaga, member of the Council of Regents. Look at you. Which comes first, God or your purse strings? Oop! We have a quite enough pirates merchants in this country already. Oh, I'm glad you recognize our pirates. Arrived here too late. Your kind? What does that mean? My kind. My yeah, kind I'm wondering pirate. what that means. I mean, John, you kind of are. You were. You were. Yeah, this bowing while sitting down thing. Uh-uh, kids. My back. My neck. Is that sure? Right? Like, where did that, where did that deception end exactly? <laughs> John, huh? I'm only catching every fourth word. Really? John, huh? You sure? Okay, ex-besties, let's see what happens. I want to see what goes on with the ladies, because the ladies, we be having conversations that don't need words. You know what I'm saying? Some, mm. John, keep your eyes on your head, sir. Ah, okay, she did accept. Wow, that's how we view kids. Okay. I mean, it's kind of true. That's not the point. <sighs> I'm sure Mariko probably kicked your butt back then, too. 
ゆうべにかすむカレーかな見事じゃ Well, she's good. I mean, isn't it a bleak situation? Look at her. She's trying to figure out what that line means. She's like, was there hidden minutes? Was there hidden? Yep. Mm. <gasps> Why? Why is this bad? Why? Yeah, she's like, I'm not actually discussing, I'm telling. Yeah, state yourself plainly. Am I a hostage? Oh, okay, sure. Outrageous how? Yeah, please tell me you have a problem with me going back to, a, to Edo. Ah, so I am a hostage. Good to know. Look at her smiling. Thank you. I knew you'd do that. Mm. God, Ishido, you're so dumb. You're so dumb! Oh! She bold. Period. Period. Traitor or not. You better speak. You better preach, Mariko. Exactly. Look at Ochiba, like, damn, she's got balls. No one believes you, by the way, Ishido. You lost that battle a long time ago. Her speech, here, whatever you just said, you were like, uh-huh, sure. Like she would tell you. No, no, absolutely not. You better play that part. Exactly. I'm so tired. I'm so emotional. I need to go be a woman somewhere. <laughs> it was a great poem. It was a great poem. A girl who's trying to send a message to Ochiba. And Ochiba's still trying to figure that sh out right now. What now, John? Why have you done this? <laughs> the way she swings her cape. <laughs> Letting I remain here by force. As well as every lord and lady being kept prisoner in this castle. Exactly. Just to prove the blade is sharp. <sighs> what part of I need to rest do you not understand, John? You must not involve yourself. Can you do this for the sake of everything we have been through? Can you not be like her husband and just not get in her way? And try to do your whole mansplaining, white caping, I'm the hero nonsense? <laughs> Oh, they're using the boy now. God. What about your duty to God? Not you coming to me in English. He mm. says that our families are one under the banner of. Oh, is that what he cares about now? I am to become betrothed to his granddaughter. Oh, well, congrats, son. I am tired of being in this family. That's These too bad. They say about your name. I am always ashamed. Okay. And if you are disgraced, it's about you then. Okay. So that's how it's gotta be. Damn, he took after his daddy, huh? Sorry for you. I mean, I know he's got valid points. It's not easy for a kid to be bullied because of that happened before he was even born. But yeah, Mariko has got a choice to make. Her kid doesn't understand, and I'm glad. I'm, I have a feeling she's never explained it to him. Okay. Oh my god, I love these. The kimonos are so beautiful. I love it. I love it. Don't lose nerve, Mariko. Don't lose nerve. You've given birth. You are stronger than all the men that are here. <laughs> I love Mariko! The way y'all are watching. These men standing there watching her. I don't need one. Hmm. Well, that isn't a part of me because I don't live here. Who is still a regent currently? Still a regent, not impeached yet. 
Y'all willing to die for this? Y'all willing to die? The way I would have been like, she said she had to go. <laughs> oh my God. Who's next? Yeah, is everyone else want to die? Y'all want to die for this? Although I guess is she gonna kill them otherwise, so. The way they're watching this like it's a sport. I can't. Oh, leper guy is there. <gasps> Where'd that come from? The way she's just standing there, Mariku, you are such a boss! Look at her! Mayhem around her and she's like... <sighs> we done yet? Hmm, so we're hostages. Just so everyone knows and everyone sees. You sure? Are you? Yeah, exactly. Oh, shut up. Yeah, otherwise, what's the point of this regency? Is it not proving that your regency is full of sh**? Oh, you're going to take on a woman? Okay. I mean, she's actually a badass, but he's scared of her. Look, he's scared and he should be. That's right. Keep going, girl. Keep going. Right? You best move. Get out the way. Look at her, she's like, give me a reason. I know how to use it. You cowards. And the fact that she's taking all of you on when there's how many of you? You should be ashamed. That damn skirt. Ochiba, you could never be so bold. You know it. You never fought for it. It's the damn dress. Take off the dress. Must all die. All right. Yeah, this is getting messy, isn't it, guys? None of y'all gonna be able to hold any control after all of this. None of y'all. Mm-hmm. Whoop. Proving once again he's not actually a Catholic. Really, y'all? 20 of you following her? Okay. Just like your lord, y'all a bunch of bitches. Hmm, Ochiba thinks she won. That's cute. Mm-hmm, more disruption. You don't think she will? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Period. 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 Because you're all dummies. Oh. Right? You're, you're a dumbass that got us in this position. Hmm. It's not going to go well for you. That's right. The hostages. Call them what they are. It's your fault. You should have just let her go. Who are you? But thanks. Uh, I'll be so sad if we lose Mariko in this episode. But like I said, if you believe in a cause, you should be allowed to die for it. Yeah, it's alright. It's the truth, though. Oh, God. If you have something to say to Mariko, ask her yourself. You better, better not show off the fact that you have something going on because if Ochoba sees that, it's over. The heir who's out here playing with dirt. <laughs> All right, now the real game becomes between the ladies. What games? Yeah, I'm here to die. Yeah, like death is my freedom, girl. I mean, some of us just walk in the light, sis. Don't be, don't be jealous. Was it? Sure, sure. Your dad was crazy. Clearly it's catching. 
Well, you could still have her if you weren't being psycho. Oh, trying to guilt her? Hmm. Yeah, she had her own things to deal with. And what do you want exactly, ma'am? Let's not. Aren't you? Right? Yeah, why not? I told you she was going to analyze that. Mm -hmm. Poor John's like, was there supposed to be a translation in here? <laughs> oh, but a tear. Okay. Sure, sure. Sure you don't. Her son's going to be fine. She has what she believes in. You have what you have. No, I understand perfectly. He's taking advantage of your loyalty. Okay. Your life is worth more than this. I think she can decide that for herself, life John. Life and death are the same. Both can have value and purpose. Only one is permanent. True. It is the very reason my father kept me alive. Well, I'm asking, then will you consider living for me? That's a bit bold, sir. You barely know her. Silly man. I'm tired of living for other men. <laughs> oh, really? Of course. And what is that? He wants you to take out Mariko himself, probably? I wish to be confessed. And speak it here. John literally drew a line in the sand. What does this mean? Then let us drink cha from an empty cup for all the years we have known each other. And for the little time that is left. Seeing their history, this makes a lot more sense now. Oh. They're preparing. Okay, we're at sunset. Man, when you sitting there about to do something dramatic and they had a soundtrack for you, that's that's next level. Yabashige is gonna do something to interrupt this somehow. Either he's gonna take her out or stop her, one or the other. Does she have to rip open her shirt too? Because that's a bit. That's right. Oh, a poem. Is he here? He didn't show up. Her son? John, no, you don't have the talent. That necklace that gave you so much strength. I will do it. Okay. But can you do it? Hell is no place. I haven't already known. Let it from your mind. No, for real. Like, I hate using the word talent, but you need to know what you're doing with this because if you don't do it well, it's messy and really painful and gruesome. Thank you. I don't think her son needed to see that. What's this? Oh. He's going to have you killed on your way back, for sure. As is protected. Mm. Yeah. About the safe passage part. Aww. Yeah, I don't know about you leaving safely at all. I don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> I need to lay down. Yabashige, yeah, what are you up to? I feel like there's going to be attack tonight. They don't want her leaving the city alive. Something is going to happen. Oh, you still don't have your necklace? John still has it? Y'all don't be too bold now. You're not alone. But I mean, there's that whole, we almost, you know, that whole near death thing does tend to get some people going. <clears throat> it is a real kink. May I remind you, her son is still in the house. Let's hope he don't go wandering around opening doors on his own. All right, they said to hell with it. I almost died, careless. But maybe it's a good thing she's not gonna be alone. Mm-hmm, what you up to? Snake. 
He's gonna kill this guard, isn't he? Huh? Yeah, right here. He's gonna kill all the hostages is what's gonna happen. Never stops being a bitch, this man. Bye, red shirt. Yep, they're gonna take out the hostages and then they're gonna blame it either on the engine or on Mariko. Mm -hmm. Bye hostages, I'm sorry. I think this is gonna be your fate regardless, unfortunately. And y'all got drunk too. Mm. Oh no. Oh, thank you, please don't call the baby. Yeah, but Shigage, he's still gonna kill you in the end, bro. You flipped way too many times, but you keep believing. Damn! Yeah, y'all getting busy. Get up and move! Never been happier for the fact that John is actually bigger than most of these guys. Come on, Medico! Balls! Balls! Assassins? They have come for me. Shinobi. Damn. Well done, John. Nope. Nope. Don't do anything that man says. Not a damn word. Woo! John's a dead eye, though. He's a dead shot. That's right, Mariko. Let them know. It's like, listen, you should have let me die because, ha! Huh, Take out Yabashige, someone please. I need a stray. I need a stray. No. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna blow it. <laughs> it's like, I said, what is this? Yeah, do you want to die? Um, John's not the let it come kind of guy. No! Is it wrong for me to hope that maybe, just maybe, she's okay because the door was in the way? I had a feeling she wasn't gonna make it out of this episode, but damn, I didn't think it was gonna be quite so explosive. I mean, yeah, I guess either way, the point was that her death was going to start some stuff. It was gonna cause more problems. And that's really what the whole point of this was. The same way with Hiramatsu's death, it wasn't just for the sake of dying. It was to start something. It was to, it was what the after effects of that death what they were gonna do in Toronaga's favor, but also in the the tides of this war. And wow, okay, damn. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Whew. Just needed a minute to process that, but yeah, let's let's get into it. Let's get into this crazy ass episode. Ah, uh, all right. So this was definitely Mariko's episode. <laughs> this was all about her kind of getting this resolution that she feels that she's needed for a very long time. It's about her feeling like she's got a purpose that her her life and her death are gonna have meaning to her and also kind of the larger picture of what's going on here. But we'll say starting from, starting from the beginning of the episode, getting the flashback of what we, cause we saw the flashbacks back in episode two, I think it was, of Mariko having these flashbacks of her in the snow. And we didn't really know what it was all about. Like I thought it had maybe something to do with what happened to her father, but we see that it did, but not in the way that I was thinking. We realized later on that Merica was already married off and gone by the time what happened with her dad did. So this was afterwards and she was suffering. Like after what happened, what happened to her family, she was clearly grieving. She was in a very dark place and with new information, she was pregnant with her son and she was running away. She was hoping to be able to leave and do what she needed to do to what she believed she had to do to honor her family and to also just not suffer with the pain of being the sole survivor of her family. And we see that her husband was sending out people, looked for her every single time, and that we heard people saying that apparently he should have just let her die, I guess, based on 
the way that she was acting because it was disgraceful to him and his family, but he kept sh showing her mercy and not letting her die in that moment. And honestly, if she was pregnant, I see all the more reason why he wasn't just gonna let her lose her life at that point. And honestly, hearing that, that gives me a little bit of a more insight into Buntoro and understanding like kind of why he felt like Mariko should have been a bit more loving towards him considering he showed her that, that mercy in the sense of not punishing her for what she did. But it doesn't excuse all the other stuff, but it does give me some more insight into why he felt like she would be more grateful, I guess, towards him. But anyways, coming back, we see that this is where Suji and her kind of built a relationship because I guess as a last resort, I'm assuming it's Bontaro that summoned him to come and talk to her because he knew she was Catholic. As we know, Bontaro is not, but her family was. So we see that Suji kind of came to her and essentially he's the one who reached out to her and got her to lean on her faith as a reason for her to stop wanting to go on these suicide missions. And, you know, of course, not only harm herself, but her son who was not born yet. So I really like that it shows why she has such a strong feeling, like how she feels about her faith, why it's so important to her, but also why her relationship with Suji is important and why she and John have, you know, butt heads repeatedly over the faith situation and why like she doesn't like the fact that John kind of dismisses all, all aspects of it because it is very personal to her. It literally was her reason for continuing on and stopping the attempts on her life after that and allowing her son to be born, etc. cetera. So it, I like getting that background and that understanding. It gives us more into Mariko and how she, how her mind has worked and where her, her head and her heart have been for a very long time. And so going into this episode, it really informs how when she took this, this mission on for Toranaga, much like Haramatsu, she knew going down there that there was a very good chance she wasn't leaving. She might have maybe wanted to, but I think the point that we should all take away from this or that they're trying to let us know is that Mariko has been okay with losing her life for a while now. Like in her mind, the life that she wanted, the life that she thought she could have ended when her family did, which is sad in many, many ways. And I, I definitely understood where John was coming from and we'll get to him in a minute. But I also understand more of like where her mind is at that like for her, it's just, she had a, if there was a path or a trajectory for her life, it ended when her family died the way they did. And ever since then, she's been just walking in a shell of herself, waiting for a reason to put the meaning, as she said, onto her life or her death that makes her feel like it's equivalent to whatever was taken to her, taken from her all those years ago. And so that's what allowed her to get that, that fortitude to go all the way to Osaka to do this mission, knowing that she'd be leaving her son behind, which I don't think was an easy decision for her, but... I hate to say it, but I feel like where I, I believe she does love her son, I don't think she has the type of, you know, there are parents who live for their kids, which is what I would say Ochiba is, and we'll get to her in a moment. I don't think that that's medical. Like, I think she does love her son. I don't think she wants anything bad to happen to him. And I think she feels fairly confident nothing will, but I don't think she lives for her son. I think, again, the fact that she was willing to let her life go while she was pregnant says to me that she's very detached from her motherhood experience. And I don't know if that makes her a bad mother. I think it's just the mental state that she's in. You know, back then they didn't have therapists and people who could work with you to help you work through that sort of thing. So I think what she had for her son was kind of an obligatory, I need to care about you because you're my child and I do have affection for you, but it's it's there's just not enough for me in life generally to be focused on you or to have you as the focal point of my life to the point where I'm willing to do anything to keep myself alive to be there for you. Which, is, you know, as I said, it could be considered sad by some but also it's just realistic. That is the, the case for some people. Like it's not that they don't wanna be good parents to their kids or wanna be loving towards them. But if you just have too much of your own inner turmoil, you just don't have it in you to, to be loving and caring that way towards somebody else. And so it's sad though, because I do think that if her and John had been able to actually get into an actual relationship and be together, I think that she could rebuild a new version of her life and herself and find a new meaning. And I think she was starting to tap into that part of herself again with John, but their time was so short. And also there's just too much happening with this war and everything else that she doesn't have time to really focus and nurture that part of herself that's slowly coming back. So, and it's sad because you know that John sees it and so does Bontoro actually, but yeah, the timing is just all wrong. But coming back, her coming in, oh God, I, mm, the scene when she goes in with the meeting, the meet and greet, and Yabiyabashige just sitting there drooling and, and slobbering and trying to get all of, all the 
sticks to the console into his mouth at the same time. Then you have my girl just come in like the boss she is. Even Ochiba was shook because she knows. Ochiba may be like, she's smart. She's a snake in the grass, but she ain't bold. She ain't got backbone like that. She was shook when she saw it. She knew, she knew for the second Madako came in there that some, she knew some bullshit was about to happen. She knew some real shit was about to be dropped. The gauntlet was about to come down and all the men, all the Y chromosomes was shook in that room, okay? You could feel it. And she just basically said her piece. Yeah, congrats on your engagement. Mm-hmm, what's up, Air? Nice to see you. Oh, that's nice. Oh, you having a poetry competition? That's cute. I would've won it because psh, genius and beautiful. But <laughs> look at the time. I'm out because y'all gross. I'm taking my family here. Take, and I didn't realize, I was I was back and forth in my mind, by the way, as a side note, I couldn't figure out if the baby that was born in Osaka was actually Toranaga's child, and it is. Toranaga, you freak! But anyway, <clears throat> she's like, yeah, I'm gonna take this family, what's left of Toranaga's family. We heading back to Edo, because mm, we don't like Osaka, it stinks. We don't like it, I'm out. And of course, Ishido, because he don't know nothing about nothing, is like, what? What are you? I'm, 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 I'm a man. You can't leave. You can't talk to me like this. And she's like, actually, I can. I haven't said anything rude here. I basically said, I came here, did what was asked of me, just came to give my, my greetings and salutations, coming to get my family, and we're, we're leaving. Because my lord, who's still not impeached, I'm gonna put that out there, my, my lord still isn't impeached yet and actually has not officially surrendered yet. So therefore, he's still a regent on the same level as the rest of you, which means that I should still be listening to his orders when he says to grab his family and go. So I've not said anything wrong here. Why are you getting all tight, sir? Why are you getting all up in your bun? Why are you getting so, so disheveled? And of course he's trying to say stuff and he can't say nothing because she said, listen, I already have brains, beauty, and an understanding of the law on my side. You have none of those things. So he sat there and he said, you're gonna stay. I don't like it, we need to review it. And of course he just wants to go and consult with Ochiba because he never knows what the hell Tornaga's doing. The only one's got a close inkling of a clue is Ochiba and he knows that, but he doesn't want to show everybody in the room that he ain't got a brain in his head and that everything's been done by his soon to be wife. So he's like, no, you need to stay here while we review whether or not you can go home. And so she said, no, you can't keep me here actually, because like I just said, all the reasons I aforementioned, you're not the boss of me, so I'ma leave. So he says, you're not leaving. And she said, hmm, okay. And she said, listen, I am the daughter of a Kechi, okay? I know y'all think what you think, but the man was a warrior. He was a samurai. My blood is pure. My blood is amazing. And y'all not, not gonna capture me. I'm not a hostage. I'm not like any of these people gonna sit around here on my knees in front of you, sir. I don't do that. I'm leaving. And then she swooped. The swoop of the cape all episode, y'all? That that needs to be coined. That needs to be trademarked. The way she swooped her, her kimono and walked out. I said, every man in the room, because they were shook. They never had the, they do not have the cojones. They don't have it in them to do that. And she said, watch me work. Even Ochoa was like, huh, loved it. But yes, as I said, one of the things I look forward to the most in that little scene and then in the one we get in a bit was between her and Ochoa because that's where the real game is. These two women know each other very well, very well. And as I said, us women, we can have whole conversations without saying a word. We just gotta be, we just eyes and facial expressions. We know what's up. We be doing layered and secret and subterfuge messages all the time. And it happened right there when she gave her a little line of the first poem. Ochoa, you saw her mind just start c calculating. You just, you almost said, like, <laughs> you can see a little pinwheel on her head the second that uh, that uh, Mariko gave her that line because she knew that Mariko was gonna tell her something in that line, right? And then she was like, I'm out. So I love that we see this. And later on, we see that Yabashige as usual is behind the eight ball. And he's like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you provoking this man? And she's like, sir, I need to rest. I need to prepare for what's going to be some absolute bullshit tomorrow. So I don't need this. And of course, it's like, what did he tell you? What did, you, what, what did Tornaga tell you? And he, she knows better. She knows better. First of all, she wasn't gonna tell nobody anyway, but of all people, she have Yabashige, Yabashige, okay. Anyway, so then that happens. And then of course, John goes to her and he is understandably like, what is going on? Like, I don't like this whole giving my life for, <laughs> in his mind, anything or nothing attitude that Japanese people have. It's not working for me. Like, what? What are you doing? And she basically is like, look, bro, I have something to do right now and I need to focus. So I'm begging you to just, I need you to not be like my husband and I need you to give me the space to do what I've chosen to do. And that's one thing that is like resounding throughout this episode that John in particular was struggling with. And again, this is what Bontaro also struggled with is understanding that Mariko is just trying to have agency over her own life and her decisions. She's made her choices. They're her choices. And she has every right to want to carry them out. And having these people consistently come in and try to interfere with that, even if it's something they don't understand. And look, 
It's understandable that they don't want her to die. Of course not. They care about her. J John cared about her. Bontoro cared about her. They don't want her to go. But much like Bontoro, John's not really trying to understand where she's coming from here. He's thinking more of his own desire to keep her around, which again, not arguing that. That's very valid. But people need to understand in order to relate to someone, you need to be able to empathize and hear them out and let them feel heard. And that's what none of these men have been doing with her, with the exception of Toronaga at this point. Toronaga. Has, I mean, don't get me wrong, Tornaga has ordered people to live against their wishes. However, he, it's not that he doesn't understand where they're coming from, right? Because in the end, he really only held back, held her back from doing that up until this point because he knew there would probably be a better time and a better way for her to do this, right? And that's what he did. In the end, he gave her her choice back because she didn't have to do it. When he told her the plan back in the Edo, she could have been like, nah, you know what? I'm living for my dad, my son now. I don't want to do this. He wouldn't have forced her, but... He knew that there was a reason. He understood the reasoning behind what she wanted to do. And he gave that choice back to her, much like he gave Hiramatsu the choice. But Hiramatsu could have been like, I ain't gonna commit no seppuku for you, bro. Forget it. Find somebody else to do it. But he did it because he believed in the cause and it was his choice, right? A hard one, but still his choice. So anyway, we see all that happens and she has a conversation with her son. The first one we've seen since like episode one or two, actually. And um, I was always wondering like why she left her son in, in uh, Osaka. I don't know if it was because she wanted to or had no choice, but either way, they have a conversation and her son validly lets her know that this stuff is hard on him too, right? He's like, I'm still here in Osaka and I'm getting a lot of blowback from what you're doing right now. But even before that, I'm getting blowback from my grandfather, our family name. Like, it's hard for me. But he's like, there's a chance that I might have a chance, you know, to, to walk away from. There's a chance I can maybe start to escape a little bit of all this ostracism if you behave yourself right now. And also, he's saying one of the lords, one of the Christian lords, I can't remember which one. He's like, he'll let me marry into his family, which will, again, he'll probably just try to be absorbed into that family going forward. And he's like, yeah, then I can finally kind of cut off my maternal side at that point and I'll be more about this you know respectable family like he's like this is my chance to get an out from all of this this uh, well I mean I guess this was, at this point it's mostly like maybe some mild bullying and ostracism but in their society not fitting in was basically death right so it was a lot and he's basically begging her to just not, just to, to go along with everything, to just do it for him. And we see that, of course, that's a triggering word for Madako. And she says like, we have nothing to be ashamed of, right? Which has always been her thing. That's been the battle she's been fighting ever since that happened is that she doesn't feel that she should be ashamed of what her father did. Cause everyone knew that the last leader was a psycho. Like he was crazy. Everyone knew it. And her dad was the only one who had the cojones to do something about it. But. Obviously we know in their society that's not the way it works. So anyways, we see that she tells him like, I don't think we should be ashamed. And the look on her face, like this is a hard moment for her. Cause I think, like I said, I, she does love her son. I think that's obvious. However, just like all the other Y chromosomes in her life, no one's trying to see where she's coming from here. Her son at no point is like, mom, why are you doing this? Mom, why is this so important to you? Mom, what is the purpose? No, instead he's listening to everyone around him. He's worried about himself. And again, he's a teenager. So look, we're all very self-centered at that age. So I'm not gonna come down too hard on him for that. But he's just caring about what's going on here and what's, what's affecting him and how it's gonna affect his future. He's not even thinking about, why is my mom willing to die right now? <laughs> Maybe we should get into that. And it's sad, but I do think that a lot of that detachment is because of Madako, as I brought out earlier. I really don't think that her and her son were ever that close, if that makes sense. Like, was there affection? Yes, but I think that emotionally, Mariko has been very detached from her immediate family here because of the whole situation. So anyway, we see that he tells her, he gives her an ultimatum and says, if you go through with this, then you no longer have a son, as far as I'm concerned, right? Which is a bold claim to make when you're not even, you're barely into puberty, but you know. Anyhow, you know, we see that that's a heartbreaking choice. Um, obviously, Mariko is sad to hear him say that, but she's resolved, like she's made up her mind. And again, if she was willing to do that when she was still pregnant with him, like respectfully son, you, that ultimatum meant nothing. <laughs> I don't know if you want to call that cruel or not, but it, it, at that point, it just wasn't something that was enough to deter her. I think if it was maybe some immediate danger to him, she might have maybe reconsidered. But for this, she was like, in her mind, she knows he's going to be fine, right? He, they, people overall, I mean, was he still going to have to live with that shame he talked about? Yeah. But at that point, she was like, I already lived with it, sir. I've already been living with it for like 15 years. Like, boo-hoo. <laughs> Welcome to the club, <laughs> right? So anyways, uh, we see that uh, sunset is coming. And uh, the regents have a discussion about this situation. And of course, Ishido is like, I don't know what's going on. What, what, what are, she's not actually going to go through with it. No woman would actually go through with this. Please, you know, she's just talking. 
And Ochaba, the only one with sense as usual, is like, <laughs> you don't know her. I do. Trust. This woman ran away how many times when she was pregnant trying to martyr herself? You think she won't do it now? You think she won't? He's like, no, she will. She absolutely will. And if she does, everybody in this Osaka, every highborn family is going to revolt because they're going to realize that A, she was a hostage and B, she's going to be exactly what she wants to be a martyr. You ain't going to have a minute of peace in Osaka if she takes her life today. And if you let her go, you're going to have to let go of all the hostages because then you're n they're not. Right? So it's like she forced your hand. This is a Toranaga move. I know it is. I knew for the second she came in there sashaying in that amazing kimono that some F shit was about to happen. And here it is. So what you gonna do? And of course, Ishido, being the genius he is, what, what should we do? What? What should we do, future wife? <laughs> I don't know. My head's just here for decoration. I'm not sure what's going on. Tell me what to do. And the other region, same thing. Huh? What do we do? Imagine all of them looking to the, the woman, the lowly women they love to, to look down on. And I love it. Don't you must say, I ain't got nothing for you. <laughs> you let it happen. You should be smarter. Why am I coming up with all the ideas? She's like, you need to make a decision. I'm not taking the heat for this. She's like, you figure it out because you didn't, you didn't need to make that big old state. I tried to tell you in there that we should discuss it privately when she was talking about she needs to go home and y'all decided to have that little pissing contest. So now we're here, so you deal with it. So of course, Ishido probably deliberated into the night, but we see that he came up with a side plan of going to get Yabashige because he knew that Yabashige is a snake, a spineless worm and was gonna vacillate anywhere he thinks he's gonna survive. So he gives Yabashige an offer of saying, hey, you can come and serve me. I'm gonna not give you the death sentence that all the other people who are associated with Tornaga are gonna get but there's gonna be some conditions, right? So that's, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, mm-hmm, something's gonna happen to Mariko. He's definitely gonna go after Mariko somehow. So anyhow, we see everything happens. Mariko is prepared to do what she needs to do. She's understandably shaken. I love the moment between her and Suji, actually, where she goes and does her confession because she knows as a Christian that taking your own life is considered a sin and she doesn't want to go to hell. So she has her confession. But Suji, I like, is just very understanding in that moment. He doesn't give her any judgment. He doesn't try to dissuade her. He's just like, if you feel like this is what you got to do, like, I'm sad, but I'll be here. Like, I'll, I'll do what I need to do to be here for you. And so I really like that because that's to me what a spiritual leader is supposed to do. I mean, obviously we know that there's more to it, but yeah, in that moment, if you realize that she's resolved and everything, just be there. She didn't need a lecture. She didn't need a guilt trip. She just needed someone to be there. So that's what he did. So, you know, like I said, Suji's, he's meh in my books, honestly. I don't really think of him as a villain at this point so much as just someone who's not standing up for what's right. Let's put it that way. But anyhow, she gets ready to do this thing. She's shaking, she's nervous. It's crazy because like, I think it's something where she knows she wants to do. Oh, actually, no, we got to get to the conversation between her and, and Ochiba before that. That's right. That's important. We have uh, <laughs> the heir summon John to have a conversation, knowing that, of course, um, it's going to bring Mariko because of, they need a translator. And it's really Ochiba who wants to have a conversation with Mariko. And John's just there for decoration, to be fair. But... We see that they have the conversation and, and well, Mariko translates exactly one sentence. But anyhow, <laughs> the girls have a conversation and I'm looking forward to this because I want to know where they're at. Like, where's the relationship? Where's, because okay, Ochiba is really where I'm wondering because with Mariko, I kind of know. We've we spent enough time with Mariko to know where she's at. But Ochiba, we've seen very little of as far as her inner, innermost thoughts. But they have their conversation and Ochiba is like, this doesn't have to go down like this. Like, you don't have to be the martyr in this situation. And I think in her own way, Ochiba is trying to say like, this war is between the men and we don't need to be involved, right? She's like, you don't need to do this. You have an opportunity to get out of this and just live your life. And I get the opportunity to make sure that me and my son are safe. And really the issue here, she didn't say it out loud, but she's like, the real issue here is Toranaga, right? That's Ochiba's real target. She wants Toranaga out of the, out of the equation. She wants him dead. She wants to do that and also secure the safety of herself and her son. And she thinks she's about 80% there, right? So she's like, look, we're old friends. We grew up together. We were sisters. We were torn apart by marriage. And then what your, our fathers, you know, they had their beef that tore us apart, but we don't need to keep the beef going. Like this is our opportunity to live life on our terms. And the best way for us to do that is for you to just stop this, right? And we see the Mariko's kind of like, well, it's cute. That's your that's your viewpoint. That's not how I see it. I have a different, I have my own reasonings. I have my reasons for why I'm doing this. Like what happened between our fathers is ancient history. This is today. 
And we see that uh, basically Ochiba is like, I don't see like you becoming a martyr. She's like, I never thought you'd be that person based on who you were growing up. And she names out how, how Mariko is just the perfect kid growing up, right? She's good at everything, smart, very intuitive. You know, we saw that she was good at fighting, like anything she did, she was good at. She's like, you were like destined for greatness. And then when I heard that you become the shell, I didn't believe it until, like she said, <laughs> until I saw you sashaying into that room a couple days ago talking about you're going to take your life like or talking about you're going to leave she's like that's when i realized that that's who you've become and she's like i don't think that's who you really are and that's when miracle basically is like we're both different sis <laughs> i'm not the woman you used to know and you're not the girl i used to know so we need to just accept it and then basically we hear her tell because like basically ochoba is saying to her in so many words I think you dying will be pointless. Like there's there's no point. You're surrendering. You're giving up by dying. And we see that Medico tells her that that's your viewpoint. My side, my viewpoint is that I'm not giving up. I'm not surrendering. It's why I'm here. Like she said, I feel like I survived for this reason. I need my death to be meaningful. And I feel like this is the way to do it. And that's why it's not... What did she say? She, she referred to the poem that, that she recited earlier, which I said I knew was a secret message. But either way, I love to see that both these women are emotionally affected by each other. Like the friendship, the love is still there. That was from that sisterhood so long ago, but both of them have just been pulled so far apart because of the situation, because of what their fathers did, because of the polit politics of this this whole circle that they're in. And it's just sad because they clearly don't want it to be that way. I'm sure both of them would love to go back to that time when they were both happy and life was carefree, but things have changed, right? You've got Ochiba who, like she said, I live for my son. I live for protecting my son. And Mariko is like, I live for bringing honor back to my name and for what I believe is right. Like we're just, we both have our belief systems. We both have what it is that we feel like we need to fight for. Mo maybe both of us are wrong. Maybe both of us are right. Either way, we got to do what we got to do. And so, yeah, we see that they both get a little emotionally affected. Ochiba actually sh sheds a tear. So does Mariko. But basically in the end, you know, it comes to a draw where Mariko's like, I'm, st I'm, I'm following this path. Like I'm not, I'm not divert, I'm not diverting. So then we see that Ochiba tries one more guilt trip and she's like, what about your, like, is what you're doing right now? Is this not going to be hurting him? Like, aren't you hurting him by what you're doing? And considering that Ochiba has said that she's done everything up until now to protect her son, it's interesting that I think she's looking for common ground with Medico in this moment. But Medico basically just ends the conversation is like, it's time to go. Because I think it's like, I, that's probably the one minute regret that she'd be feeling about this situation is that she knows it's going to hurt her son and she knows that her son does love her. But as I said earlier, you got to do what you got to do in the end. Mariko's still her own person. She was her own person before she became a mother. And for some people, the conviction that they have is more important than all those things. And so anyway, that conversation is important, I think, just for giving us a little bit of insight into Ochiba. But yeah, we then go to the evening where she's preparing to do this thing. And we see that some of the other ladies have come to be witnesses to it which is really kind of them, honestly, just to make sure she didn't feel alone. And then she, we see that Ochiba, which actually, I skipped right over the whole badass part of when Mariko tries to leave that fight scene. Oh my God, it was so good. It was so good and it was so good because like if she had actually managed to best her way through that, that would have been badass, but it would have been a little unrealistic if we're being real. Like she's good, but that was like 12 on one. That was a lot and there was still more to come, right? So it was not feasible that she alone after all of the other men died. Like, man, my man, Tormag wants to send his worst warriors. <laughs> I mean, cause they all got taken down, but anyway, they took some people out in the process to be fair. But anyway, that was so realistic in that, yes, she still did some damage. Like considering she was on her own and in a kimono that barely lets her take more than a, a quarter inch step, she did damn good. She did damn good. And obviously she's out of shape, right? I don't think she's been doing sword play like she used to when she was a kid for a while. But I was like, girl, I love that it showed that she is not a joke. It showed that she is a force to be reckoned with. And those men were shook. They were. I don't think any of those men would have taken her on one-on-one. -on -one. You saw that they had to come on to her 12 on one. It's the only way they could beat her. But I love that they showed that, but also the fact that it was not really plausible that she'd be able to fight her way all the way through. She didn't really want to though, honestly, because we know that part of the plan was she'd have to stay in Osaka. So anyway... Uh, I just thought that was great, that whole moment. And it just showed showcased the strength and 
just the the ferocity of this woman. And I mean, all those men were just, you could see they were just fixated and transfixed by her. And we saw that the Lords did not want her to die either. Cause I do think they respect her, you know, despite everything. But anyway, she'd asked one of the Lords there, one of the Christian Lords to be her second for this situation, because she's like, if you take my life, then it's not, I won't be the one who did it, right? I'll just wound myself basically. Anyhow, that night comes and he doesn't show up because he doesn't want to do it, right? It's part of the whole Regency thing. He doesn't want to do it. But we see that John offers to do it just so that she's not, you know, left without having the sin on her head. And I like the line that he gives her about, he's like, I've lived in hell or I've known enough hell to know that you don't want to go there. So I'll do this for you. And again, as I said in the episode, I'm like, I'm glad it didn't come to that because I don't think John had it in him. Truthfully, I don't know if he would have been able to do it. And also like, I don't think he would have been able to do it properly. Uh, in, the in the episode, I was mentioning that it's it sounds sick to even say this, but there is an art to taking off a head in one blow. Seeing John step up, I was like, oh, good God. Like the last thing we need is this man having to hack repeatedly, right? It's horrible. You want something to be done, one and done. If you got to do it, please make it quick. But anyhow, like Bonturo actually would have been the one. But anyhow, uh, he goes to do it and we see that Madoka was doing her best, but honestly... You know, it's one thing to say you want to do it. It's another to actually get down to it. And even though I don't think, I think Mariko is at peace with dying, being at peace with dying and actually doing it yourself are two different things. It's it's crazy because you're, you're, everything in your natural human instinct is to protect yourself from harm, right? That's our literal basic primal instinct as humans is to prevent self harm or prevent harm to ourselves. And so it goes against everything for her to, to do that. And in that time that she's contemplating, we see that Ishido shows up and basically gives her her permit to leave and, you know, says that everybody else who wants to leave just has to ask for a permit and they can go too, right? So I knew from that moment there was something up his sleeve because there's no way he was going to lose-lose in this situation, right? Either have the revolt or have to get like, get rid of the hostages. He was not going to do that. So at that point, I feel like Medico should have clocked in. But again, bless her heart. She's smart, but she's one of those people that kind of needs to be led to the... <laughs> Right, Toronaga had to kind of leave a little few blood, a few breadcrumbs for her to get to the, to get to the plot. But anyhow, but it shows that yeah, there is a small part of her that still does want to live. And again, that part I think is very connected to John. But anyhow, that happens. But then you know, uh, later on that night, her and John. Not much to say about that. As I said, maybe a bit careless to be doing that there, but. Near death experience, I think they both recognize how strongly they feel for each other in that moment because of it. So they needed to let that outlet get out there somehow. Best to do it when Monturo's nowhere nearby. But anyhow, then we see that the, the plot unfolds later on, right? That Yabashige, as soon as I saw him on the watchtower, I was like, yep, he's either gonna assassinate everybody or try to, or be part of it and all the above, right? We see that he takes out the guards and allows the Shinobi to come in and their job is to basically assassinate all, almost all of the hostages. But I think they were supposed to leave Mariko alive. Um, yeah, I think they were supposed to leave Mariko, Tornaga's uh, other wife and son, or maybe she's a consort and son, and then the other, his sister. I think those were all supposed to be left alive because I mean, I think they plan on probably just taking them out when Tornaga got there. But either way, all of the families with the exception of that group were basically to be taken out. Although no, they were gonna take out John. They were gonna take out John because they did go into the quarters to go after him. But anyway, thankfully, uh, Yabashige, when he did his whole fake, oh no, there's intruders to make himself look in innocent. They hadn't found John and Mariko yet. So thankfully, John and Mariko heard that. They got to action and they got into action quickly. Thankfully, John has that gun on him at all times. And that definitely saved some lives along with Mariko just being a damn menace with a knife. And we get to a point where it all ends up in uh, the warehouse, right? Them backing out. Of course, Yabashige is trying to funnel them in a certain direction, right? Because he knows where the Shinobis are going to be. But John and Mariko are not letting that happen. They're doing their own thing. And Yabashige, of course, can't run away because at this point, it's going to make him look guilty. And if they survive, he knows it's going to come back to him. So he has to follow them. And that's when he genuinely gets scared because the Shinobis didn't guarantee anything if he didn't follow instructions, right? Neither did Anshita, I'm sure, I'm sure. So we get them into that place. They go into a back room where they're able to barricade the door and they can't be kicked in. But then we see that the Shinobi get their hands on some explosives because they're going to blow the door, right? Their job is to get it done. They need to get it done before sunrise. And we see that John is thinking, okay, we can put more things in front of the door. It will take the majority of the blast. It'll give us some time. But Yabashige is refusing to help John. He's just going to the farthest part of the room because he knows from back there 
he might get hurt, but it won't take him out. And of course, he doesn't want to stop them. He knows he can't stop them. And we see that Mariko, she at first is like wanting to help, but then we see her say like, John, just let it go. Like, like again, she came to this whole situation prepared to die. And this is more the way that I think she wanted it. Like taking her own life is hard. It was already a struggle. She saw how hard it was for her to do and also because of her faith. But if somebody else does it, that's kind of, I think, what she's always pictured as far as that moment is somebody else doing it. So she just basically resigns at that moment. She's like, okay, this is what I came here for. And of course, John is not that type, right? John is not, we already know that John is not the type to let that happen. That's why he survived on that ghost ship for so long. But she ends up going and standing in front of the door. And of course we see that Yabashige is like, bro, like don't do that, come back. And John, of course, realizes too late what she's doing. And she does her same pledge that she said in front of all those men when she surrendered, but she's like, I am the daughter of Akechi and this is what I'm doing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm making my stand. And, and then of course we have the explosion. And again, she may have survived. They did make sure they showed that she got a blast, but it kind of looked like, I didn't go back and watch. I mean, if I went back and like slowed it down, but it kind of looked like there was a piece of door around her and that the blast was coming from around. But I don't know. That's very much me just wishful thinking that she survived this. But if she didn't, her mission is still accomplished as sad as it is. Like it will still be a meaningful death because she was supposed to remain untouched and everybody already knows that she was supposed to be let go. So if she suddenly died from an explosion while trying to save the, what's remaining of the noble family. Again, that leaves Ashido in a really, really bad place. Like he has no way to slide. To, there's no way for him to slide out of this. It's going to cause more issues in the Regency again. And it's also going to cause more issues throughout the Highborn, throughout Osaka. So again, I really do hope that Mariko did survive. But if she doesn't, then it, it, it folds into the plan. Which it sucks because this is now going to be two people. No, three if you count, I guess. It's Hornaga's son who have died for this cause. Who have died to get this thing off the ground. And Tornaga is not even shown. He wasn't even in this episode. Not one hair of him this whole episode. So like, I just, I need episode 10 to be that girl. That's all I got to say. I need episode 10 to be that girl. I need to see something happen. I need people gone. Yabashige needs to go. His snaky ass needs to go. I'm tired of him. He's got to go. Ashido's got to go. Ochiba's got to go. Who's got, who else has got to go? All the regions, actually. They all bitches. They all got to go. I need there to be a cleanse. I need a culling. I need a very deep and thorough culling of all things in Osaka. And I would say burn the city down, but there's a lot of innocent people that don't have anything to do with this. But I need it gone. The air can survive. The air can survive. Ochiba. I kind of want her gone. I respect her. I love her as an I love her as an antagonist, but no, I need her gone. I need her gone because she's not going to stop coming after Tornaga. Yeah, Ochiba. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I mean, her son will will be fine regardless. But yeah, I I need them all gone. I'm tired of this. This is ridiculous. People, there needs to be blood for for Mariko. Either way, justice for Mariko. Hashtag justice for Mariko. I need her to be avenged, even though I know that this was for her. But still, I need her to be avenged. I need John to just go on a war path and just start taking people out. It needs to be done. It needs to be over. Bontoro's definitely gonna have some more fuel in his, in his step two to get after these guys. So yeah, that may have been all of Mariko's arc. May have been, I said at this point, because we're not sure. All the previews we had of this show went up to this point. So it's possible she's gone. But if she's not, then that's good too. Cause I do like her character a lot. She, she was a complete and utter badass in this episode. Anna Sawai needs to get her awards. I really hope that she's going to be uh, considered and that they're submitting for her because she deserves it. Very, very good performance overall. But yeah, where does that leave us now, right? I don't think that Ishido expected things to get to this point. I don't think that Ochiba gave him the idea to take out the noble families either. Like, it feels messy. It's like, that, that feels messier than something she would do. But maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, where that's going to leave Ishido now, I know that Ishido and the Regencies are going to be a mess regardless because things did not go exactly according to plan. And I have a feeling that after this blast, the Shinobis are not going to go, um, they're not going to go as ham after everybody as they planned because I do think that John is going to take out quite a few of them. I think it's going to get thwarted. So we'll see what kind of a mess Okasaka is in after this is done. And yeah, I'm just really eager to see what Toranaga's plan is going to be from here because I don't... Obviously, he predicts a lot of moves ahead of the time. He knew what Mariko's moves were going to do as far as putting the Regency in a certain place. 
but yeah, I, I don't know. I'm wondering what his moves are. Either way, I know he's got a plan and that this disruption in, in Osaka has given him probably more than ample time to get some things in place while they were distracted with whatever was going on there. So, whew, hell of an episode, you guys. That was a hell of an episode. It was intense, very intense. Once again, we didn't get action till the end, but all the same, I was tense through all of it particularly with all the things that America was doing. And yeah, I'm just curious as to what's going to go down now, how things are going to go, what this final episode is going to bring us. But either way, all I know is, like I said, I need all those people I named need to go before the end of the season, ideally. And I'd like Tornaga to survive. But he actually has to. If he doesn't survive at this point, what was all this for, right? <laughs> What was it all for? He better survive out of all of this after all the sacrifices that have been made for him. So yeah, great, great, great episode, guys. Again, kudos to Mariko. If that's the end of her storyline, you were that girl. You were her. We appreciate you. I'm sad you had to go, but if she's not gone, then yeah, I'm really happy if she does get to survive this and get a chance at living that life that I think she really wants to have with Jack, or Jack, with John. Who the hell is Jack? <laughs> I really, really love to see that. So yeah, great episode, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. If you did, please show some love, and I will see you in the next episode.